Hello, mech fans. This is Duncan Fisher. Hold on firmly to your mana potions, fireballs, and familiars, because you are tuning in to your regularly scheduled episode of the First Circuit Podcast. And with that, Happy New Year. Today's topics are New Year's resolutions, MechWarrior Online, some stuff about that, 2019 recap, major topics happened last year, and what's going to happen for First Circle Podcast in 2020. Tonight's hosts are Ian. Happy New Year, everyone. Biter. Oh, God, they stole my kidneys. <laughs> and myself, old Bob, 10025. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Decade. Did you guys do anything special? No. <laughs> I just dreamed, <laughs> basically. For for, yeah. for me to go out, it's like a, a two-hour drive to see fireworks and stuff like that. So I streamed um, Generation Zero with uh, Bat Duck and people. And it was around like 12.30. We go, oh, hey, Happy New Year, guys. <laughs> That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> That's oh, funny. no. <laughs> yeah, my, mine was kind of interesting. This year was the first time I didn't do any fireworks myself. So it was kind of relaxing. I was just on the couch watching The Expanse with my girlfriend. And at some point we go like, holy crap, there's uh, New Year's in five minutes. Let's go outside and see if anyone has fireworks. And yeah, it was really nice. And how about you? Yeah, uh, I, we went outside. We're right by the river and saw all the fireworks along the Thames. It was a quite nice sight as nice. usual. And I didn't sleep through it like last year. <laughs> <laughs> I I do have to say though, when uh, um, since Bat Tech lives in Hawaii, for some strange reason, they like to pop up fireworks like crazy, and so like every five seconds, what's pop 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 bang 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 bang, bang. <laughs> just constantly. I mean, for literally about four hours, we're playing Generation Zero, and it's not like a war zone, like right outside his door. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> it was. It's... But uh, yeah, it, it was a uh, it was okay. My wife went to bed around eleven, I think, and she's all, "I can't stay up anymore." I'm like, "Okay, don't worry about it. Go to bed. Go to bed. Don't worry about it." Uh, uh, that's all people for you. Yeah, yeah. That, that's all. That's all <laughs> people. That's what we do. Um, how about resolutions? You guys have any resolutions for next year? Nope. No. Uh, Never really done New Year's resolutions. I mean, mine pretty much. I'm just, gonna, I'm gonna sorry. stay comfy in 2020. Yeah, that looks like you're doing that right now, actually. <laughs> um, I think mine is more of just lose a lot of more weight, uh, get you know, take care of myself physically type thing, and go from there and work on my channel a little bit more. Um, you know, kind of put more effort like into it. That's about it, really. Nothing really exciting, I guess. But that's about it. So, yeah, yeah, nothing exciting. Um, how about? Um, <laughs> You know, speaking about nothing exciting, how's uh, uh, MechWarrior Online? Uh, basically, you guys been... <laughs> <laughs> all right, so right okay. quickly, we always cover the little events and sales that are going on, and all the things, events and sale, everything is 50% off. Mechs, camo patterns, mm -hmm. mech bays, whatever, whatever, 50% off. A nice, simple sale. If you want something, it's cheaper. Yeah, and yeah. the event page. We've also just looked through a bit like that. Play the game, do this, that, and the other, and you get C bills, premium time, and MC. So all the good stuff. Yeah, it it has the um it has the opportunity to get up to eight hundred MC, which isn't too bad just for playing the game for what you're doing, and you know a couple uh, what I think like four or five million like C bills, not too bad just for playing the game. So try it out, guys, if you guys can. Go have fun doing the yeah, events. I'm Definitely a huge fan of the sale. Just 50% on everything is really nice. Uh, the sale ends on January 14th. So at the time of release of this episode, you're still going to have some time to pick up stuff if you're still missing anything. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Yep. Speaking of speaking of missing anything, I feel like we're missing something. What are you missing? Updates to make very online. Oh, well, that's that's been all year, <laughs> actually. <laughs> for a while. <laughs> that's been all year, though. That's a problem. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, they're working on MechWarrior 5, so that's pretty much like what it is. And even next year, I doubt it, I doubt there's gonna be a lot of patches or anything else going on, except for like, hey, we fixed the you know, now the, the knob on the right hand side is now red instead of blue, you know, basically that type of thing. That's probably what they're gonna be fixing. You might get the similar level of stuff as what they did for Faction Warfare in yeah. 2019. Yeah, true. All right, true. so. Uh, with this uh, new year that coming upon us, shall we cover the past year, 2019? Starting, of course, with MWO. 
Hot One <lacht> <lacht> Song sagt mir nicht gern. <lacht> yeah, you know, like, like we said, MechWarrior 5 has been taking up a lot of PGI's time, which I understand. <lacht> Uh, making uh, that and then they kind of put MechWarrior online as a back burner type thing with a couple of people working on it for patch notes and some packs here yeah. and there and you know that kind of thing but I mean not a lot happened last year uh, I mean you, you know got... well, that's why I wanted to go over just first yeah. what actually did happen so yeah. okay. um, we only had like five mech packs of course the Warhammer 2C Corsair Marauder 2C Rifleman 2C the Dervish and somewhat also the Mech Warrior 5 mechs the unique variants yeah. that they brought out for it um, otherwise the I think that we got the new maps so well the old maps and the reskinned maps that were already in the game yeah. so they yeah uh, adds a bit more uh, content from that. Uh, they did the yeah, faction warfare changes that remove scouting. Yeah. Um, I haven't played so long. What's the name from that uh, Wiscan map? I the don't name? remember. Um, I don't remember it. Hibernal. <laughs> no. Is it Hibernal? God, it's been no. so long since I played. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I, just, I, I mean, I most I of us remember it as Froze, as Frozen Canyon Network. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Frozen Canyon Network. Yeah, I, I kind of get the feeling we're not even qualified to talk about Network. <laughs> 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 oh man! Oh man! That's pretty bad, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they reskin the map or the old maps came back, um, where they got the uh, the really cool nifty uh, canyon uh, or the tunnel system in uh, yep. Forest Colony, which is just a great ambush site. Oh god, I love that thing. A um, couple other, God, what other ones do they have actually? Uh, Frozen City, but I think that was last year, uh, the year before, right? Uh, not uh, the Frozen uh, City we work was the year before, but the original Frozen City is also back. Oh, okay. Yeah, the okay. old Frozen City, yeah. because the old... they replaced the old with the new, yeah. and eventually they brought us back the old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the old map where no one remembers how to play the map, and everyone decides to go into the city rather than fight over the dropship, how they're supposed to do. <laughs> it's tradition, <laughs> fight over the dropship. <laughs> it has a lot of triple yeah. F burgers, right? You know, like, like inside the uh, dropship? Lord joke, by the way, guys. Okay, anyways. So, yeah, new maps, older back. Uh, faction warfare changes. I, I know something major happened that uh, really pissed off a lot of people, especially one of the hosts here. And what was that? I forgot what it was. Uh, I, even now, I'm mostly forgetting the faction warfare changes because nothing really changed. But, of course, for me, uh, they removed scouting <laughs> as yeah. an option. Yeah. They, they've done a bit more slightly to... to vaguely differentiate the different roles you know you are a little bit more if you're uh, a loyalist than mm -hmm. if you're just a generic mercenary and the loyalist tracks instead of just maxing out afterwards you'll actually have a recurring loop of rewards but maxing it out and playing through all that loop is quite a pain <laughs> if you find people to play with yeah yeah if you find people to play with yeah yeah, that's uh, they 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 pretty much uh, also change where you're stuck playing one faction, or or allied with factions. So if like say Lau yep. and um, and Davion fight, you could be part of Karita but still fight on Lau's side. Uh, but you gain less uh, faction points because you're part of an ally system or something like that. Just really weird things. I I they I, try to put little yeah. stories into faction yeah. play and. Yeah. That didn't really actually add to the gameplay. If you're still were playing Faction Warfare at that point, it was, you know, for the gameplay rather than necessarily the story. And adding a story is just going to possibly push people away rather than draw them in. Yeah, yeah. I, feel, I feel like the Faction Warfare changes one along the same lines as some of the events. They had the very best intentions. They just didn't really nail down the execution. Very true. Yeah. Because um, since, yeah, as Bob was forced to mention twice now, the, they're focusing on MechWarrior 5 uh, a lot. Things like bringing back old maps or just reskinning existing maps uh, was much more economical with their time. You don't have time to uh, put into mech packs. And um, it's really sad that there was only five pack mech packs this year, but in the end, it took them so long to actually make a profit. It, Business-wise, it makes sense why they're cutting back. But mech packs, at least uh, for previous years, was such a great um, cycle to things because it always meant there was something fresh every month you came back, and there was yeah. always more options in the game. And 
with the mech packs gone, the game is stagnant, and it just is. Uh, particularly with obviously them focusing on something else, it's uh, I think a, a big reason why a lot of us have not kept our interest in MWO. I I definitely agree with that. Um, I mean, literally, I think the last time we played was like I think like two or three months ago, um, and then I think we talked about a patch note somewhere around there too. You know, and that was kind of like the last time I really actually jumped in Mech Warrior online. Yeah. I've been doing other things, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, Gen Zero and, you know, World War Z and playing Mech Warrior 5 and stuff like that. So, yeah, it, 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 it you know, when you have this kind of fresh stuff, like I always say, like, when you, you, know, when you go to gaming stores, uh, perfect example would be gaming stores. You, yeah, I'm going off on a tangent here. Not, I'm going off topic, sorry. Um, you go to gaming stores if you have a new section that's never actually updated for new items inside a game store. You kind of just don't want to go there anymore. When something's new there, you want to purchase what, whatever's new and get you excited to come inside the store again. Problem is, Micro yeah. Online hasn't had anything new. You know? Yeah, that's actually a really good knowledge because um, a lot of the game stores I know, like the physical game stores, yeah. they all they have really is Warhammer 40k and yeah. Warhammer Fantasy. So I completely stopped going to them because it's basically Warhammer store and I don't care about Warhammer so why would I ever visit it and it's what yeah, sells it's in game cool. stores now actually just Warhammer 40k unfortunately I yeah I but, guess but if it's kind of like yeah. they ditched everything else but okay we're, we're off topic yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry but, but yeah for me the loop with MWO was um basically I mastered almost every single mech in the game like uh, before it was kind of that um before they did the new skill tree it was kind of neat going through all the pages of all the different variants and having them you know the with a little eagle saying they've been maxed out and it's a way to keep the game fresh and whatnot but yeah. uh yeah with less mech packs coming out there's just um only so much material left for me to consume because i have mastered almost every variant um except at this point you know i haven't bothered with all the the same uh uh, flavors of dervish it's just <laughs> <laughs> with their um towards the end of mwo or at least you know um the last couple of years they've been trying to make the game uh more mundane in terms of quirks they're trying to make everything samey and mm -hmm. so when these new mechs came out they did offer this that and the other but it was just sort of they're, they're even less flavorful and now there's even only just five mech packs that came out so uh, yeah, for me, it's just there's less material to go through and therefore not a reason to come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's kind of the spiral. You have people like Bider who, just, who are just tired of the game because they're so hardcore, they've burned through everything the game has to offer, which means less people, which then means something like our Friday night game nights have completely died out. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the spiral where every so often less people play and that makes it even less fun, so even less people play and it's kind of downward spiral. Well, you know, plus also too, talking to YouTubers and and uh, Twitch streamers, the, their their content's pretty much uh, they they already tapped out the content. So you know, yeah. the, you know, the funny stuff that you know people used to do, you know, for content wise is already tapped, done, and, and basically they're just burnt out on, on that kind of stuff, doing the same thing over and over again, and and so they're going off to doing different things, and so Mike Warrior Line yeah. pretty much is is going along that route. Yeah, and even in the past when they were doing simple little changes here and there, like heat scale limit quirks, we really liked those because it just, you know, meant you could do a completely different build on mechs. Mm -hmm. And if they you change how weapon balance works, it's like, oh, wow, they made AC2s a lot cooler. Well, I'm going to try a lot of AC2 mechs now. Yeah. Just if every month or so or every other month there's some gameplay changes, um, it gives you a reason to try things out, test things out, and it changes the game balance and keeps things interesting and dynamic. But with the game being so static for so long, it, th people fall into a rut, and you know things just aren't going to change. True. Yeah. True. Macware Online has the issue that the balance is too good. The balance the is too balance, good. Balance yeah. is mostly fine nowadays, and it has been mostly fine for probably years, if we're gonna be honest. So yeah. there's not a lot for PGI to really change in terms of balance, which means there's no real incentive to test out new stuff because you found what you like, you found what works, and why would it do anything else? Yeah. Well, plus the uh, game engine too is it, that's a big a big problem because you can't really change much out of that. Well, the simple idea is just to, from Pete Piranha Games' perspective would just be you want to you know get, keep this uh, money making venture as going on as long as long as possible, mm -hmm. and so it's just a matter of input and output. And if all you need to do is go in occasionally and change some values and you know keep things varied, then 
you, you know, you, you can keep players for longer and they'll be you know, paying more money for mech packs, et cetera, et cetera. The game won't die so quickly. But yeah. because they aren't changing things at all, yeah, I, I do agree with Ian though, that the game is so well balanced at this point that there aren't there aren't that many issues with everybody just in the end going into Hellbringers or everybody in the end just taking a dual nut goose ERPPC nightshare. Like we had times in the past where uh, these mechs would just a, a certain loadout would just absolutely dominate, but as it is right now, um, most of the mechs are quite viable. You can. Uh, there's no super meta mech like the clan's laser vomit has been pulled back so much it's on the e even keel with most other weapon systems yeah and yeah. Th there's still fairly mediocre weapon systems like i feel srms are still in need of some help and some love because uh, they're a very dedicated short range weapon system but they do a lot of splatter damage and even with artemis it's a huge investment for and something that you might as well just take MRMs or other weapon systems for. But yeah, as it is, at least SRMs are not, they're not going to make your mech terrible. They're just a little underwhelming on average. And that's why at least most of the time, if I'm taking something with, which is a short range missile, it's a streaking short range missile. That way <laughs> it doesn't matter that I'm splatting everywhere because, you know, it's a homing missile. Every single shot hits. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. Oh, okay. Um, what yeah, else actually and, happened? Um, one funny point we've written down. We, we were wondering if it was like, oh, was this the year the escort was removed? But I think it was removed last year. So we've had a whole year of no escort. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Hooray. Better times. Better times indeed. I know. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the smaller things that we on the first circuit don't really care about, but the competitive scene is now player one. Um, another way for PGI to save some resources there. Um, I yeah. can't. I personally can't judge whether the quality went up or down. That's for other people to decide. Yeah, I'm not all interested I, in it. I mean, it's not that we. Is that the rules players have been going by is a lot more intricate and appropriate for MWO yeah. than what Piranha Games threw together. So, cool. uh, if you're letting the people who are interested in this stuff run it themselves, then I, for on average, I imagine they're probably going to have a better time. Yeah. Well, it's not that we don't care. It's just we don't cover it because we don't play it. Uh, I mean not care but it's not care. within our field yeah. of interest yeah. Uh, yeah. so directly yeah true yeah. true isn't that kind of the definition of i don't care no no mm. well like you know people think like i don't care how... like screw you competitive screw you you know no it's just like we just like yeah, yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> you know don't think. but yeah it, 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 it just sounds more harsh that way you could also phrase okay. it as it's something i give i don't give a damn about but <laughs> <laughs> That is also <laughs> sounds much harsher than how yeah. I actually feel. Well, what Look at all those fucks given. What? <laughs> hmm, okay. <Yeah. laughs> one, thing, one thing I would like to mention for uh, 2019 is um, the events. We've talked a lot about event fatigue. And mm -hmm. it's definitely obvious that whoever is in charge of events is really trying their best, mm -hmm. especially if you look at the pictures, stuff like that. Like the current picture is an Irby with some uh, face emotes. Nice. Yeah. It's really good. It's obvious that someone is putting a lot of effort into them. But it's, as we've talked about a lot in the past months, it's just the fatigue is there. It's not really enough to keep us interested. So it doesn't, it's, it's not enough to save MacWire online, even though someone is putting a lot of effort into it. Well, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's it, you know, basically, also too. It's it's they're putting something out there so people have something to do. You know, for not for not like us where we used to like do every single event, and get stuff done. It's for the people that just come and casually go. Oh, hey, look, there's something there. I'll go try the event and go play the casual player. But for us, we're like, oh, yeah, another event, great. You know, basically type thing. Right. The event, um, the structure back in the day, I liked about events and things was just you know you. Um, it gave you a reason to turn on the weekend yeah. or turn on that week and work towards getting particularly the MC because the MC stacks up. And then with that stack of MC, you can buy hero mech, you can buy mech bays and whatnot for 50% off when they're on sale. Um, and I think, you know, uh, the, for the most part, the events have, you know, stabilized. They aren't trying too many crazy things with them and they know sort of what people want. The only thing is uh, the events also, um, have to be fairly savvy and generic uh, because everybody is getting the exact same event at the same time. So if you put in the event thing saying, oh, 
uh, do this much damage with AC-20s. It just becomes a flurry of AC-20s or mm. do this much missile damage and yeah. or, or get kill K KMDDs. And it just means people take their LRM boats, you know, to try and spam as much dam damage as possible. And it, you can't, if you make the events too particular, then things, you know, it, the game devolves into derivative strategies. And if you make it too generic, like they've in the end gone with, it's um, people just play the game normally, but it doesn't, it doesn't make it special. It doesn't actually give you, get you off your, your behind and make you really want to play a mech, generally speaking. And that's just what, how the event system works, I think. And that's the, the best they can really do. Well, yeah, compared to the systems that that are, that are out there, like you know, for like MMOs, they have like a special um, outfit for, like, say, Christmas or something like that, yeah, or like a special like sword you could dress up as a candy cane or like whatever, basically, you know, that kind of stuff. But MechWarrior really doesn't have that per se, except for cockpit items. And literally, though, I mean, you just look at cockpit items and they're just there just to be on your cockpit, and that's it's like okay, I got something there, and, and without a system to go find your cockpit items out of three hundred mechs. It kind of you just don't really care anymore, you know, type of thing. So, but yeah, like you're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. It just it doesn't. You know, it's it's all the same, Sammy. But I mean, like I, I give him props for trying. You know, you know like definitely, I, I give him props for trying. Uh, beautiful pictures. I love his pictures that he does. Gorgeous pictures. Um, like who does it? Is it? Um, I forgot his name. Is it, is Matt, it Newman? Matt? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Matt Newman does a really good job in pictures, and hey, he comes up with some. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, that's got a cool idea. You know, uh, but yeah, it does seem kind of samey uh, a lot of times. Also, I would like to put out a big shout out to Matt. Um, he's apparently the only one who selectively does stuff on the MacWare online page. Oh, big shout out to <laughs> you, Matt. Well, well, by him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Given the tools available, he yeah he's done a fine job. I think. Oh yeah. The images yeah. and the events like a. Yeah, it's not the minimum effort uh, product. It's just, yeah. I think for us, uh, particularly, it's just the, you know, as we said, it's just the amount of support, you know, core gameplay changes to gameplay balance or new mechs coming out are what keep the game fresh and interesting. And events was always sort of the cherry on top. Mm -hmm. um, and with just events, all you've got is a cherry and it's nice, but uh, it's not a filling meal. True, true. Okay, so that was uh, MechWarrior Line recap for 2019. Let's do MechWarrior 5 for 2019. Yeah. MechWarrior 5 in 2019. Well, we've started the year for MechWarrior 5 with the Community Edition pre-order. I think that was announced during MechCon 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Feel free to correct me, guys. I, um, no, I don't it, recall. No, sorry. It really, lifted, it really lifted off in January 2019 with... Uh, well, at least that's where we got the absolutely amazing trailer on YouTube for the Community Edition pre-order, mm -hmm. where it was sitting there like, we are so excited. <laughs> Zombie we <rest>. absolutely <laughs> love our fans. Our fans are the very best. And we want to thank all of you for your participation. So we provided this pre-order with a lot of free stuff from Megwire Online. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I the thing was, of course, <laughs> yeah, Russ was, of course, extremely tired from putting on MechCon. And then they, it was just like, all right, we need someone to talk to the community. They, 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 the eyes skim past Tina and they just look at poor Russ and he's just <laughs> lying on the floor. <laughs> lying on the floor. <laughs> and they just, they drag him onto a chair and says, all right, Russ, it's your turn. It's your time to shine. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the trailer was uh, sadly a little bit tragic and it didn't convey very yeah. good energy. But I think that community pre-order, um, they did offer quite a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. It was very that, good. That pre-order back in the day was absolutely amazing. I know we were really enthusiastic about, us, about it. I think all of us actually pre-ordered it, except mm -hmm. for Lash. And yep. we were really excited about it, especially they offered so much stuff for MacWare Online. It really felt like PGI put this out because they cared for all those people who played MacWare Online for so long and they really wanted to thank us. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a great gesture back in the day. And then stuff happened <laughs> shortly <laughs> after. <laughs> so also in January, we got a so-called gameplay trailer that showed some Mac on Mac action. Um, some of these scenes I've actually come to recognize in the campaign. Mm -hmm. They used mm -hmm. some campaign footage there. Yep. And then we got nothing. 
yeah. silence and even more silence and basically nothing happened until a certain announcement with a certain game store happened. When no, was that? A- accidentally it got announced. Uh, basically, the the attacks yeah. accidentally put that out, and then we all started speculating what, what you know what's going on. Yes. So they accident they it, updated the Macquarie. Oh, I don't remember. I forget what site it was. They updated the no, no. They updated their MechWarify website. Yeah, you know yeah. the place where you did the pre-order, and the the sections about oh yeah, you can redeem your Steam key somewhat just for some reason disappeared Mm -hmm. (laughs) and everyone's like why did that disappear are they going epic store exclusive it seemed really likely a lot of games are going epic store exclusive hey hey guys why did it disappear and they're just like oh well yep you found us you found out (laughs) all right it was even worse like for a couple of days they were like no don't be afraid we're not going epic store exclusive we are absolutely not going epic store exclusive this is just part of our redesign of the page we clarified some things and no we are absolutely not going epic games so exclusive and then the day after was like yeah we're going epic games so exclusive by the way exactly exactly and that that was a really big thing like it wasn't just that they um promised steam back in january for the community pre-order but they specifically said days before the official announcement that they would not be going Epic Games so exclusive. And at that point, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not mad at them going Epic as much as I'm mad at them lying to us literally days before. Well, like Russ knew yeah. about that. They were in talks with Epic. They were uh, yeah. At that time, Russ was talking to Epic. And, and, and yeah, just like you, I'm pissed off. But- that he lied, but you know I'm a gr- I'm a grown adult. I can take that. But the whole thing is though, I'm I'm mad that he did lie at the time, saying that. Hmm. I mean, Epic. I don't care about Chinese ninjas and you know attacking my computer. I got twenty other different like launchers and you know crap like that. So it doesn't bother me. I, I don't have a tinfoil hat except for this. But um, <clears throat> well, that's not fair. Bob. Come on, You've come on. Have you heard arguments. the crap they've been saying? Oh my god. You you heard my arguments though, so why dro- no. you know, scrape the bottom of the barrel? Yours is fine, basically. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna go in like uh, Steam. That that that's okay. I don't because, care if you go yep. in Steam; it doesn't bother me. But well, like, because so- um, yeah, so yeah, they were uh, the the key point at least about lying is uh, one that they uh, pretended that a couple of days before they finally had to just cut, confess. Yeah. But they also were selling pre-orders with the pre-orders saying we'll offer a Steam key whilst they were in negotiations. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Near the end. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think uh, as I said when this became public, I, I could see the business reasons of why they did it. Mm-hmm. It makes complete sense. Yeah. Um. I am not the biggest fan of them trying to hide it, though, because uh, it, it, it implies sort of malicious intent rather than just coming forward and being honest with your community. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're you're definitely right about that. Yeah, yeah and, and that's what, uh, that, yeah, that's what they talked about back in the day. If they had just done the HBS stuff of talking to us and be like, "Okay, we need some more months. We don't have the funds for some additional months, so we're in talks with Epic right now. Please don't be mad at us." Uh, please still pre-order the game. We could really use your assistance here. And people would have done it. But exactly. the fact that they completely hid it from us and the fact that it was even admitted in one of the AMAs later in the year that, yes, during the pre-order, they were already in talks with Epic for going exclusive. That's what really set off everyone, I think, on this one. Oh, yeah. I I, I mean, yeah. I definitely agree with you on that one. Uh, the, I mean, the lying part is just kind of like, really? And, and and like you said, the, like the spec... Um, the the practices that they did and lying to us was kind of crap. That was really crappy. Basically, that they did that. Um, you know, I don't really care about the Epic Store. It doesn't bother me about being on there. You know, uh, yeah. I'm okay with that. There was going to be some amount of backlash from the Epic Game Store. Oh yeah, no how they did it, yeah. but the way they did it exacerbated the wound. Oh, like God, they poured yeah. salt mm. into it. Uh... <laughs> A little bit more salt. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know. Though um, I will say, even though they uh, were not very good customer relations wise, which is often our complaint with PGI, um, they were very fair with their terms re- in regards to refunds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a, a greedy company, uh, if they really were malicious, would not really make refunds at all easy for MechWarrior 5. And they would get be like try and punish people who. Uh, redeemed the MechWarrior Online stuff. They say, mm-hmm. oh, you redeemed part of the pre-order, so I can't refund it, I'm afraid. I'll see you in court, you know, kind of deals. But with them, they said, no, 
you can keep all the MW stuff and we refund you within a very wide period of time. Which uh, is very generous yeah. too. Very generous. Yeah. So um, again, even though the execution of the pre-order, like Russell, the videotape, it, it was not very good. The actual pre-order was great. Mm -hmm. the, them going Epic exclusive was the right business decision probably for Piranha Games. And um, them going public with it is better than doing it the last day, even if it was by complete accident. And the way they offered the refund was great. It's just, again, all, uh, time and time again, their PR was just always uh, without any polish. It's just, you know, spitting on the floor every time. Yeah, yep. was, yeah, yeah, true, true. And since we're on the topic of PR and communication, there were a lot of AMAs doing 2019 mm -hmm. for Macware 5. And I think the first one was kind of interesting. I even listened to the second one. But beyond that, they, they just kind of got repetitive and didn't really tell us anything new. So yeah, AMAs happened. They didn't really give us any insights they, into the game. They were really cagey with the AMAs. They didn't want to reveal too much about the game to their most diehard fans, which I feel, again is dodgy. the wrong way to go about it. It, it, it's, it feels dodgy. And as I said, it's just yeah. sort of, um, as time went on, we had this whole year waiting for MechWarrior 5 and they were just sort of in a shack and sort of saying, it's got mechs in it. There's yeah. a lot. <laughs> you know, like yeah. during the whole time, the whole, I mean, the whole time I even heard of MechWarrior 5, I do, knew nothing about it. I'm literally, literally. And even listening to AMAs when Russ goes, oh yeah, we changed the UI system. Well, can we have a picture of what it looks like? You know, what is it? What does the UI system look like? I have no clue what the mech bay looks like. Oh, well, you know, we got mechs inside of it. And it's like, well, that's nice. I want to know what the story is. I want to know, you know, ha, you know, like what's going to go on inside the inner sphere, what this is going on. And they, they drop the ball constantly on the AMAs, a constantly about like talking about it. And even the, you know, like, you know, like you're talking about the AMAs were just, Hey guys, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. And we're going to, you know, if there's some mechs in it and you were going to, you know, you can modify some things and, yeah. you know, we're not going to give you any pictures because we're just not going to do it. One of the major things about the AMS that I really hated, um, I felt like they specifically picked out these kind of really general questions. Like it's AMA number seven. Um, someone comes in for the very first time and asks some of those really basic questions that have been answered a couple hundred times. If you're really good at communication, you're just going to ignore them and be like, um, we have articles out there on our webpage. Please read that and then that. That's the introduction to the game. It's the introduction to the universe. And get these kind of information yourself. And then you're going to answer the interesting questions. But I feel like what PGI has done, or was and Tina specifically in most of these AMAs, where like they completely crossed out any questions that were in-depth and interesting. And they just defaulted back to those really easy questions where they could talk a lot about stuff like, yeah, we're going to have a Mac Bay and it's great and customization is the main focus and stuff like that. True, true. And that's kind of why I completely tuned out of the AMAs after number three because it's the same questions every single time. Yeah. It's just um, communication, <laughs> but PR is just not... PGI's strong suit. And I, I will say again, I'm glad that Russ took the time and effort. They they pushed pushed him out there to do the AMAs. <laughs> but in his car. Uh, uh, yeah. But yeah. yeah, sometimes in his car. But um it, it, it's just uh, sort of their mindset or corporate culture is that they, they, they will try and make a good game. They will try and, you know, do right by their players. But when it comes to just simple things like you know, talking about their games, being enthused about their games, and really selling their, you know, the, the games to their audience. Um, they, the only person they that they put make do that is Russ, and Russ, Russ's skill set isn't one hundred percent tilted towards that. So, you know, and, and he, and he's often also he's just the guy in charge. So if you are asking him about how goes, you know, the uh, stability of the code, how is the game coded, yeah, all more particular things are much more interesting. He, of course, he doesn't want to speak on somebody else's behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you're the if you're in charge, you're not going to try. This was sort of the problem with No Man's Sky. You know, they got a really enthusiastic developer on, and they asked him lots of questions about what would be in his game, and he just, you know, he, he couldn't tell them no. It's just like, oh yeah, there's going to be lots of great ideas. I've got loads <laughs> of ideas that'd be awesome in my game, and uh, yeah, sure, I'll try and implement that. But obviously, 
yeah. you know, Rust doesn't want to put a ton of work on people's plates when, you know, the first thing, first priority is getting the, 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 the game out the door, which is the right thing to do as the boss for the most part. But uh, yeah, all of them felt like they, um, they feel very constricted in what they have to say. And that doesn't present a good face to the public. Hmm. Yeah. And since we were talking about the Epic earlier, um, I feel like it's this place to give one more shout out to Matt Newman. Um, I remember the AMA they did after the PG uh, after the Epic Games the Fallout, and Ross was really defensive, and he just put out his reasoning. He talked to us for a while, took some very basic questions, and then left. But um, the really cool part of that AMA was when was left, and Matt Newman decided to stay around, and he actually listened to what people had to say. He answered some of those pressing questions, and. Again, that's something I've said back in the day. Um, they should have just let Matt do all of those AMAs. Would have been so much better. Yeah. They just need yeah. to clone Matt and put Matt <laughs> <in charge. laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, actually, Matt's okay. a pretty cool guy. So, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And then one of the other AMA topics was obviously marketing. Mm -hmm. um with was saying there would be so much marketing the marketing budget is so much bigger than what micro online had and yeah it's now 2020 the game has been out for close to a month and i don't think we've seen any white wrench marketing at all well marketing did they have though they had uh, um, some novels come out from catalyst games labs um about the game which was which was in pdf form they had mm -hmm. um a couple videos like one or two videos i think yeah, yeah, they you definitely know. had some paid reviews. Yeah, yeah, like um, yeah. Angry Joe Show uh, did it, and some other big streamer, forgot his name actually, like was on with like thirty thousand people or something like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, that was it, really. I mean, for what I can understand. Yeah, I, I'm. I I can't really speak too much in depth about it, but obviously, um, it seemed the impression I got is that Macquarie Five they they had planned for it to come out like not even this year, but the year before or the one before that, like the, um, the schedule just kept getting pushed further, further down the line. And for a small company like that, I imagine you're scraping the bottom of the barrel to actually finish this game. And that's why obviously it makes a lot of sense to sign up with Epic and Epic gave them some money. So yeah. instead of $2, we have a much bigger budget, guys. We have like $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they made what do with what they could so uh, that's my guesstimation just it feels that they probably if they didn't have the backing of epic game store they would almost have literally nothing for marketing just what little they scratched together with the uh, micro five it had next to nothing but still yeah there's some money actually pumped into that yeah there was some um also i think it was either chris larry or uh, matt newman uh, did some did their own videos about what the um, skirmish is going to look like and what, you know, this looks like and stuff like that. And I, I give him props for that because because a lot of people didn't know like anything was going on. So uh, I, I think they probably jumped in and said, hey, well, let's do this. This might be kind of cool for people because people are asking about this. And so, they, you know, I'm not sure exactly how the how the procedure was, but they popped out some, you know, a couple of videos of what's going on. So that was good. Okay. Yeah. But at least uh, what they're talking about, they they want to go Epic Game Store, they want to sell millions of copies. The type of marketing they did that was nothing on that scale. The they're still relying on that small niche word of mouth audience yeah. to really get the word out. And I think plenty of people did pick up the game, but it's still, I really doubt they necessarily reached their marketing, no. uh, their no, their, no, their no. goal. Yeah, and speaking of, speaking of which, um, I know one of the major points was said about going Epic Games Store exclusive is discoverability. With the Epic Games Store, Mac Warfare 5 is going to be on the front page for so long, for so many months. And what is it now? And I'm kind of scrolling down. It's it's still a new title on the Epic Games Store, but you have to scroll down at least three times before you can find it. Well, it, it's uh, a lot. Yeah, there it's is. a lot less of a of a um, uh, lot less games on Epic Game Store than actually Steam because yeah. Steam has a bunch of like two cent games and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. basically like on there, so it gets drowned out. Like I can understand discoverability on the Epic Game Store, but mm -hmm. I mean, literally though, like yeah, it's, it's third one. It's next to Detroit here's, here's and Phoenix the, Point. Here's the thing, though. Um, we don't probably don't want to dive too in depth in this, but um, real quick, Steam has something like uh, recent titles 
best-selling titles that have been recently published and those kind of lists. So even if your game has been out for a month or two, mm -hmm. as long as it's still selling fairly well, which I'm assuming Mac World 5 is going to be because it has a very hardcore, even though niche community, um, it would be still easy to find on the Steam homepage. Whereas on Epic Game Store, I remember when I'm looking, when I was looking up Backware Five Epic Game Store page for one of the past episodes, I couldn't find it at all on the store page. I had to specifically search for Backware Five. Well, the Epic Store so, page it sucks. You know, the you know the Epic yeah, Store yeah, thing sucks. That's, that's it's horrible. You know, like 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 I just want to find games that are like you know you know you know like I want to find games by low to high as far as price wise. There's nothing like that, you know, because you know I would pick up a couple games that are on there, right? It just it sucks. Yeah. It's a horrible system. They they just just crappy, but you know it, it's on there. So I, I... it's really hard to ever really tell. You know, like there's a lot of numbers and stats that go into this thing because uh, for me at the very top um, available now is a cycling list, and one of those is still listed is Macquarie Five. But if I was mm -hmm. logged into the store, if I'm logged into Steam, for for example, it'll have a tailored list at the top mm -hmm. for me of yeah. games similar to the ones you play. And yeah. obviously, if I play a lot of MWO, Macquarie Five would be there. So it's hard to say. Like, um, what's the chances uh, somebody looking at the uh, at the Epic Game Store uh, will see Macquarie Five? You could say something like, you know, twenty five percent. And Steam, it might be something like 10%. But then you've got how many people are looking at the Epic Store, you know, a couple million, and then how many are looking at the uh, Steam Store, you know, like you know, five or six million. Like, uh, it all becomes very complicated, and it's yeah. hard to really tell. And in the end, at least for them, it makes a lot of sense to still go on Epic Game Store because they get a much better cut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. More uh, plus upfront money, too. Yeah, yeah, but so, yeah. the sales figures of two million, I'm not very sure about. As for the longevity of MechWarrior Five, I mean, this is jumping a bit later into the year, but uh, it had a huge number of people viewing on launch. But almost after a week, the number of people playing and viewing MechWarrior Five has dropped. very quickly bottomed out and dropped yeah. out. It's yep. still, it's now more than MWO, but it's both of them are basically dead. Yeah, basically, um, like before it was like forty thousand, like the first couple of days, like you know thirty, forty thousand. Now it's dropped down to about three hundred uh, on, I think, um, yeah, a good like time, th a three hundred, four hundred, sometimes, you know, type thing on a yeah. good night. Hmm. So yeah, it, it it definitely dropped, and even MechWare Online, like I look, and normally on Friday nights you have a bunch of people, you have like three, four rows. Now it's only like two rows, basically, of people, on like Twitch. Yeah, so because Macro those few people who still played Macro Online are not going to be in Macro 5, so obviously. Yeah. 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 And most of the people who were doing Macro 5, they were totally you know, like adamant about it, are doing Macro Online now because of the repetitive nature of Macro 5. Mm -hmm. At least I think. <laughs> so. But since, since we're at the end of 2019 for Macro 5 now, um, obviously the beta for Macro 5 was delayed. It became kind of a demo. Um, there were a lot of mm -hmm. issues with the beta, but it was, oh, God, yeah. I think, very enjoyable still. I think the co-op mode was fun. I don't know, Bob, what's your opinion on body beta? Fun, probably. It was cool. The um, the only thing I had a really big problem with was uh, uh, people joining. You had to restart again constantly. That's yeah. the biggest pet peeve of mine. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it, overall, though, it was fun because I had a lot of people come in and say, "Yeah, let's go play together," and you know, and it was a lot of community type thing, and that was you know, like I I definitely liked that. The beta acted, well, as you say, as a demo. It, it gave people a snapshot of yeah. the final game. Um, there were some issues, like you said, the joining was an issue that they had to fix. There was, um, uh, uh, what's it, joystick support? That was yeah. a big one yes. for Ian. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you know, they, they made it e you know, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, you know, easier <laughs> gameplay. Um, and now it's, it's mostly just, you know, it's the same experience, just uh, instead of having the campaign and then XE bills, you just, you know, do the same missions over and over and over again, which is mostly the same as the full game. So, yeah, yeah I think it's a fine demo. It, it gave you a snapshot. The snapshot had a, was a little rusty, but that was somewhat to be expected. And they did polish off the rust for yes. that final release. Mm. Well, that's what demos yeah, are think... made for, though, you know, just to give you, hey, here it is. That's it. You know, here's like one episode or something like that. Yeah. 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 That, that's what I'm saying. It's it's yeah. not a bad demo. I think it was, except for some of those issues, which I really would have liked had they fixed them during the beta. Mm -hmm. um, besides that, it was a fine demo. 
Yeah. Um, and I think in general, this is the point, point in time, like early December, very late November, where it's looking up for Mac OS 5. Because later on, we're getting, obviously, December 10th, launch of Mac OS 5. Um, plenty of excitement, plenty of reviews, very mixed reviews. Mm -hmm. But also a surprising amount of interest into the game. Especially given that they had zero marketing, so few people actually knew the game launched on December 10th. I think the interest was surprisingly high. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, and, uh, plenty of attention. Yeah, for and then was. moving on past launch, there were still many bugs, many issues at launch. But again, this is where it's definitely going up in terms of quality and in terms of communication. At that point, it became obvious that PGI is indeed listening to feedback. They are indeed hearing some of our voices. And immediately during the coming two weeks uh, between launch and Christmas, they put out some hot fixes. They put out some fixes for major issues people had. And they communicated some stuff that they were going to do later on with the developer update, which we covered, I think, uh, yeah, last episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Which was uh, not an ideal developer update, but hey, lots of information. And yeah, yeah I think this is kind of the high note we should end on for Mac Warrior 5 in 2019, because I think Mac Warrior 5 started 2019 high. It got really low in the middle of 2019, but it ended, Mac uh, it ended 2019 on a fairly high note. I agree. You, you know, every game has bugs, every game, like when they launch, because everything's different as far as different machines. So yeah, they did a good job. You know, basically listening. Um, the the Twitter account is freaking amazing. Uh, they you know every single time I, I read something from the MechWarrior Five like account, I'm like oh that's pretty funny. You know, they do a good job. They do. You ever read those? Like Ian, I thought they do. I thought they do a great job. They're okay. At okay. least they're active. I'm gonna yeah. give them that. Yeah. Active. They they're definitely active. have yeah. someone sitting full time on the Twitter account, which is good. I like it. You know, it's just kind of cool. They actually you know instead of like hey, it's on the Epic Store buy it you know and instead of that they're actually engaging in the community <laughs> you know type thing so they're doing a, a better job of communicating which is good so yeah high note yeah. you know high note like 2019 plus you know they're listening in next month uh they come out with a patch too so it's good it's good things yeah i i think um or this month, order, it, yeah. it um it was good it was good to glad to, glad to finally hear MacWare 5 was actually you know got, got a solid release date a solid window and the pre-orders were in and they had a really nice pre-order but then the they just don't have the resources or personalities to really keep people engrossed in that period and i mm -hmm. think that's what really somewhat helped let them down and the way they handled obviously um epic game store exclusive just made things even worse yeah. and you know we were really down before the game actually launched because we had basically nothing told to us in that entire time and what we were looking forward to when we got the pre-orders was obviously finally hearing about the game and seeing it shape in front of our eyes that's the fun part particularly with smaller in more indie studios mm -hmm. is you can see the game develop with them because you know it's not a huge project it's not uh, it's much more a personable deal but uh no they they did not handle that very well i i think you know the game launched well enough it, it wasn't an absolute it wasn't duke nukem forever <laughs> and then i had a fun core gameplay of shooting stuffs um and they are in the future i think for me i'm i'm just looking forward to seeing the mods and yeah. dlc that yeah. they put out for this thing because yeah, i think fun. it's a fine enough base but it has a lot of crinkles in it it's uh yep yeah it absolutely. needs a lot of ironing yeah yep. definitely uh, speaking, speaking of which um we did some number ratings last last week um have you guys changed your opinion about that or are you still where you were last week i kept it you know basically 7.5 7.8 uh you know just like we were talking about just now like what biter was saying it, it's a fine game but it could have been 100 percent better you know it could have been a nine you know type thing it could have been so much better on, you know, put lore on the planets. You know, why'd my map change last night? What the hell? What's a, what's a Federated Commonwealth? You know, if I knew if I knew nothing about the game, like, why in the hell is my map moving? And who is this Federated Commonwealth? I don't know who these guys are. You know, you know, you know that kind of thing. It, it needs some polish to make it 100% better, and it would have been so much better. Hmm. Yeah, I, f I feel like I'm also still at my kind of 6 out of 10, mm -hmm. 10 rating. I think that's something I can absolutely stick with for the current point in time. But again, I am really looking forward to the early 2020 months 
to see what they do. Um, specifically, I'm waiting for the editor, which is supposed to release in the coming days hopefully mm -hmm. maybe was said they would put out an update at the day this podcast goes live and also i'm waiting for crash fixes because that's probably my number one frustration with the game right now yes. i'm <laughs> crashing on average every second mission well like and that's just too much last night you were playing with me and and i started cussing at the screen and going because i stopped right because i had the uh uh, my my whole screen froze because they had the dropship with the dust like coming up. For some reason, every single even a mech warrior line totally screws up my system, and so it either crashes me at that point. So I'm like, no, 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 don't crash, <laughs> you know, type thing. So yeah, um, I'm I'm looking forward to crash fixes and a couple other things I need to go fix. But I I just wish it was better. You know, basically my um I I guess I had big expectations. You know, of that looking at BattleTech from Hairband Schemes, what they did where it has a lot more immersion compared to what this is, where it's like buying mech simulator online, you know, and that's pretty much what I do now, you know, look around for, Oh, look, there's an Atlas D I'll, I'll purchase it. You know, that kind of thing. That's what I do now, you know, and the story is okay. And it just, it could have been better. could have been a lot better. Yeah. And I gave it a 5.42 yeah. spare tons out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> and that was uh, in recognition of things like the mech lab, where you, you're much more restricted in options, which means mm -hmm. if you, even if you try and ton down and you max out the armor, you have a lot, just yeah. 4.42 spare tons lying around. And it's just, there's nothing you could do with that. Yeah. There's yeah. no way you can really build around that. And for me, I'm not sure, like my mindset would sort of be, I give, if you take MWO and... Um, put on the campaign uh, thing that we got like in MechWarrior 5, it would be a 6 out of 10. Because it's like, yeah, okay, you got MechWarrior Online, Mech Online's gameplay and a grander map where you earn sea bills. I mean, I already could just play MWO and grind sea bills against actual players. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be a 6 out of 10. But because it's not even up to the standard of MWO yet, I have to knock a few points off it. And that's why there's just so much room uh, for improvement. Yeah, yeah true, true. Yeah, I agree. But still, again, I would like to end. Um, I think Mac 2019 definitely ended on high note for Mac 5. It's going up. I'm optimistic for 2020. Same here. You know, the mods what I'm really like looking forward to. I'm talking to uh, Will and you going, hey, man, make this mod, make this mod, please, please make it. So, yeah. I think uh, yeah. first mod is obviously fix the spawns. I, I think even TTP's campaign has like a fix spawn mod so that they stop spawning behind you mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of stuff. And yeah. you could do things like uh, change the radar, make it so it's actually useful. <laughs> Instead of like walk around yeah, circles, you have stuff to do. But yeah. again, yes. you don't you don't really want to judge a game with mods. You want to judge a game on its own because it's the developer's job to fix the game. It's not the modder's job to fix the game, even though that's probably what's going to happen soon. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, God, I hate going back to Bethesda, but uh, Fallout Four, <laughs> you know, type thing. Uh, they the mods made it better. The game was solid. The game was solid by itself because I played it like three times with no mods and twice with mods. And the game is solid, basically. But with the mods, makes it so much better because you have stormtrooper armor if you wanted to, or you know, look like Darth Vader well, or like whatever. I, I, I was you know. actually thinking a similar line of just, uh, oh, you never know, it could be the next Skyrim of first person. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so, but obviously, you know, Skyrim and yeah, Fallout 4 yeah. to a degree had a lot of issues, but yeah, uh, yeah. people just uh, radically improved upon that base with mods. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, true. Okay. So, uh, wow. Okay. Next uh, subject is uh, Battletech and the DLCs hey, let, that we had. Let's go, let's go to the game that we always point at when we point out something MechWare 5 does wrong. Why could MechWare 5 <laughs> be like Battletech but a first person shooter? <laughs> yeah. Why could MechWare 5 just be a clone of Battletech? <laughs> okay, Battletech. Um, Battletech was fairly straightforward in 2019. Um, they got acquired by Paradox Interactive in 2018 mid 2018 so for the whole year they've just followed the usual paradox release strategy where they put out major releases every couple months in combination with a dlc and in between those they put out small patches with minor fixes and additional stuff so for the main stuff we've had the heavy uh, we've had the urban warfare dlc in early 2019 and now in late 2019 
the heavy metal mm -hmm. with the accompanying 1.8 patch, which I think we can all agree on is Battletech as it's at its absolute high point right now. Well, also too, they they listen to to the community because I know like one thing was being able to move around your lance inside your mech bay, yep. right? And so they like, okay, we'll do that next patch, and that's what they yep. did. Small stuff you know. like that. And yeah, modding support and the mechs they promised a long time ago, and even more mechs and all those weapon systems they wanted in, and. Yeah, I think Battletech is really easy to summarize in 2019. They put out a lot of free, a lot of free stuff, a lot of paid stuff, mm -hmm. and they overall improved the game from a good game to a, I would honestly say, near perfect experience. Immersion is yeah. really good in that game. I mean, they really, really good. helped to polish up, up the game. I think um, so. The DLC plan they had, obviously, the first one was Flashpoint, and as a DLC, in the long run, it on its own wasn't that valuable. But obviously, it set the groundwork for them to have little story missions within career mode or after you finish the main story mode. Mm, yeah. And I think Flashpoints was the way to go. Um, just the uh, yeah, multiple missions, what back to back. You know, big choices and you know a very interesting loot at the end that was the way to do to go rather than just increasing the sandbox and not only that they did increase the sandbox they mm -hmm. added many many more missions and mission types to the base status sandbox game and yeah uh, more biomes with urban warfare and even um yeah i think flashpoint had it and heavy metal they added in some maps as well so every single time they're iterating on the game and every single time they they fiddle with it it becomes better and better as a more fun experience mm -hmm. um and, and one other thing just mentioned is i think the uh, the skill tree as well uh, people who had complaints or issues about skill yeah, tree some skills it, yeah. like bulwark yeah and whatnot and they even in the most recent patch uh they did help improve it like uh the more skilled pilots you are at uh, evasion means they have better hit defense and they have just the harder to hit in general which makes it uh piloting way more useful because it used to be yeah. only how hard it was for it to melee you and it's mm -hmm. like well as long as i just shoot them down before they get close i could ignore piloting more or less and yeah. the only thing you take it for was the unsteady threshold. And yeah, I think Headbrain Schemes shows perfectly how to sort of do it. You build the you know, great base game, you add on the Flashpoint system, you're like, okay, guys, we're going to have little mini campaigns. And yeah, these two DLCs adding extra, uh, so much more to the game. The only thing is, of course, this um, the perfect kind of battle tech game with lots more customization and options and stuff is completely antithetical, of course, to the setting of being in the periphery of the succession wars where you're supposed to be in the technological stone age. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, the Battletech franchise is all about, you know, the choice and uh, not necessarily being space poor, but being space rich. <laughs> <laughs> and for that, you want a wealth of mechs, a me wealth of mechs options, et cetera, et cetera. In a more realistic setting, it should be when you're fighting the Capellans, you're fighting just Erbies and Cataphracts all the time, or, and Vindies or whatever. Like, you know, it, realistically, there's only a few mechs that are actually being produced. The huge variety, like Highlanders, I don't think in the periphery you would see any Highlanders uh, whatsoever. Rare. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as it as it is, instead it's like instead of making it so that you fight the same three mechs forever because you're in this re region of space and moving anywhere else would you know be costly and changing your mechs would be you know impossible. So basically, you're beating you're beating up Vindy's cataphracts and Erbies with Vindy's cataphracts and Erbies. <laughs> 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 instead of that boring, the mon monotonous game, uh, BattleTech has shown that as long as you do it with style and pizzazz, people will go along with it and enjoy a fun, expressive experience. And every single DLC has tried very hard to add in mechs. And I think Heavy Metal was uh, the great ex example of them learning that you can't just throw in assault mechs. You want to actually throw in the smaller mechs. And you actually want to add quirks mm -hmm. to mechs. They, uh, a team remembered quirks. And that's something we are still hoping for with MechWarrior 5. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they did, um, they did a good job. Plus, the PR that they did for uh, for Air Rain schemes was uh, phenomenal. I mean, you know, having yeah. Mitch on there was just, you know, I mean, like I think every Thursday night he does like Mace with Marauders or something like that, and mm -hmm. yep. does a great job, you know, promoting the game, having fun, Absolutely. enjoying it, and that's what you want to have when you actually want to sell a game, how exciting it is, and great job, you know, basically they um, and the Heavy Metal was a, a phenomenal. Uh, thing bringing the Marauder, the um, and the 1.8 patch bringing in the uh, 
the um, the Warhammer stuff like that. And the then also like yeah, cool. yeah, the unseen, the the Stinger and Wasp and all that kind of stuff, the Valkyrie coming in. So mm-hmm. they they did a great job at what they did. And uh, I don't know if they're actually going to make anything else after this, except for like updates for patches and stuff like that, because there's no yep. there's no roadmap. You're know, basically going That's on. That's going to be an interesting question to see because, as far as we know, HBS is done. Yeah. yeah. Tech. I mean, obviously, they're going to have a small team supporting it with bug fixes and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah. as far as we know, there's not going to be much more to add on the battle tech, which has one major upside, which is mod compatibility. Because yes. at this point on, you're not going to have to worry about your mods being outdated every mm-hmm. couple of months because there's a major patch at this point. If you're a mod developer for Battletech, this is the time where you can really put everything into your mod because you don't really have to worry about major changes that force you to rewrite everything. Yeah. So that's yeah. A, yeah, true. Definitely an upside. I think Heavy Metal is a fine capstone to put on the top of Bat- Hebrine's game Battletech and leave it there because um, I'm not sure what else they could really add. I mean, you can do more Flashpoint campaigns. You can add in more mechs, maybe some more quirks yeah. to the originals, but... Uh, I, I think mean they're... stuff like stuff like infantry, uh, helicopters, yeah. you can playable drop tanks, yeah. stuff like that. There's yeah. stuff to potentially add, but it's just a question of is it fun enough that Terrapoint Games should bother putting the resources in to probably do it, or is it potentially something that's more likely to be modded? So I think um, the thing like having your own tank sounds nice and all, but it does fundamentally change gameplay balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that's always been their mindset that uh, yeah, when they add in new weapons, those weapons are things you put into the mechs, a system that you know they built at the beginning. There's a base, and you're just adding more to it. When you're adding in playable uh, tanks and stuff or shooting down helicopters, you're actually changing the gameplay balance. And that's, exactly. that's uh, Hairbrain Schemes is, uh, you know, done a masterful job showing how to do gameplay design for the most part with their their game and well, uh yeah well maybe like a macro management so like you actually have a merc company but you know it's done in scales where you have lances like instead of actually just individual <laughs> mechs you know that's, you know, type that's of a completely different game though well well i know like no. you know like macro scale you know type of thing instead of but macros. yeah that, that's what i was saying earlier um with all the stuff that you up op- obviously could add to Battletech. I don't think that's stuff that really should be Hairborn Schemes thing to add. Like, as yeah. we are talking, you have to balance it. If you mm-hmm. do playable tanks, you have to probably balance it. And it's something that the developers of Stellaris talked a lot about back in the days. Um, it's really tough to put in features as a proper game developer because you have to make sure that it doesn't break anything. The balance is still there. It's still fun. You support it for any bug fi- with bug fix and stuff like that. Um, and it makes a lot more sense to just say, okay, modders, this could be your cue because as a modder, you don't really have to care about balance. No. Like yeah. If someone just likes the balance, they just don't play a mod. So that's why stuff like that yep. is something that I'm personally expecting modding to add for Battletech and not yeah. HPS. And, oh, and you yeah. need the uh, these additions like playable tanks to be bolt onable because if you're doing this much work, you're going to ask for it to be a paid DLC. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not doing it for free. And if it's a paid DLC, it's a, a change to the game, a radical change to the game that has to actually be you know, something that you can put on or not have at all because a fair number of people might just buy the base game and not have uh, the tanks. And if you change the game so that you can have tanks and they don't have it, then all you that does that's not very ethical game design where you're like, oh, I'm sorry, you didn't buy, pay the DLC, it's just mostly broken for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, uh, yeah, that was Battletech from Hairbrain Schemes. Next up, we have Battletech Tabletop, which we plan to talk about a little bit more in 2020 as well. So, uh, biggest thing, obviously, uh, was beginner boxes. Uh, was that last, or 2018? I actually hit double check because I was so certain that those beginner boxes were 2018. Mm-hmm. But if you if I look at Amazon and some of the game stores, they started, they started being sold in January 2019. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the the, new, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the new beginner box sets, um, in my opinion, they're somewhat overpriced compared to what we had with the last iteration of box sets but still they're really good introductions the miniatures are really high yeah. quality they feel mm-hmm. super nice they have all the words you need to get started and it's a great starting point 
Well, like most box sets, so like say even the Shadowrun and the Cyberpunk box sets that they have for beginner sets, they're you know, and they're twenty bucks. Like even the Dungeon Dragons one, that's you know, it's twenty bucks. Has the basic stuff, tells you you know, blah blah, blah this and that and that. And I, I thought they did a great job. Uh, you know, it has a map, it has two figures, has uh, um, like little cards you could go and look at, really nice pictures, and you know, it tells a little bit about the universe. So yeah. it's a great introduction if you ever want to get anyone into the game. Yeah, and it's, yeah, yeah, it's good. Th- Thanks. Yeah, it's it's something I was saying at the beginning of the year. Like, if you can still find it, I think last year's box set uh, for sixty dollar with a full battalion of mechs is obviously much more value per dollar. But as long as you can't find it, the current beginners box set is a great introduction and it's really high quality. Yeah, that and box set is thirty six mechs. Uh, yeah, last one had okay. Yeah, I think uh, either twenty four or thirty six. It's definitely a lot more okay. than what the current sixty dollar box set has. Yeah. Good deal. But it's nearly impossible to find. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Yes, that. Uh, moving on for Battletech, throughout the year we've had a lot of, um, well, we've had some new fiction. Uh, Turing the Stars is a really interesting series where they go through every single system in the Battletech universe and do a small source book about it, which I think is one of the coolest projects ever imaginable. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be one of the longest running projects ever imaginable given the size of the Inosphere. Um, they had the House Arano uh, source book, which again, great interaction between Hellpoint schemes and Catalyst games, putting out a actual source book for the video game Battletech. Mm. They had the new Alpha Strike rule set, which I, again, don't, like, yeah. I don't care about, yeah. but it's again a great introduction if you're into some really fast paced Battletech. And they even had some novels. Apparently, they released the Rogue Academy young adult novels, which I'm. I don't like young adults, so I haven't checked them out, but there was some new fiction. Overall, though, fiction-wise, um, 2019 was somewhat of a low year for the Battletech universe, Battletech franchise. Um, after all, they published Shattered Fortress last year, and mm-hmm. they're obviously preparing to move into the era post the ages that we shall not name on this podcast. So that's, again, something I'm also looking forward Beyond that, they have a lot of stuff available as PDFs, and they have a lot of stuff available via print-on-demand on Amazon, which is a really cool system where they don't have to stock printed novels, whether they send the PDF to Amazon or whoever does it in the background, because obviously Amazon is going to outsource it. And when you order a print novel, it's just going to be printed somewhere, potentially even locally, and going to be shipped to you as a single novel, which is a really great system, saves a lot of money um, for the publisher. And I'm really happy they make this available. Yeah, actually you talk about Turing the Stars and uh, I got the PDF for, or the two of them that has all of them like up to date. And it's a great read. I mean, great read of what's on the planets the, the and the history. The only issue I have with Turing the Stars is it's set in 3068. So it's like what happens in 3068. They have a little bit of um, past history, but not much though. But it's all set in uh, either 62 or 68. I forget like what I forget like which one it is. But it's set in the, you know in in what I like uh, 3025. But still great read though. Beautiful read mm-hmm. and you know shows a lot of cool things in it. So they did a great job at that. And I think there's like 2,700 planets. Like in the inner, just in the inner sphere, not the periphery. That's a few. So yeah, yeah. There's a lot of touring the stars. <laughs> yeah. a lot of and stuff. then moving toward the later part of 2019, we obviously had the biggest thing that the BattleTech franchise had to offer lately, which is the Clan Tabletop Kickstarter, mm. which blew everything out of the way. Insane amount of funding. Um, currently, the backer kit is live, so you can full um, choose what you actually want to buy. It's going to be shipped out in March 2020 for the first set and late 2020 for the next set. We've talked about it a lot, so I don't think we should go too much in depth. But yeah, Clan Tabletop Kickstarter, it was a great year for Battletech Tabletop. Yeah, they did a beautiful yeah. job on the figures and everything. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Look, the elementals, I just want, you know, like, I don't like Clan, but I'm going to get them just because they look so freaking cool. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 well, um, yeah, I'm very much an outsider to Battletech Tabletop, but my vague impression is somewhat that um, they're really sort of trying to capitalize on you know, these big titles, MWO, MechWarrior 5, and of course, Hairbrain Schemes, Battletech. This is the time to somewhat revitalize the franchise. A lot of people are looking back again at Battletech, and this is why, you know, they appear at MechCon and whatnot and are much more 
uh, interacting and trying to modernize the franchise. Mm. Uh, that's my impression. And I think part of that modernization is they are adopting the art style of MechWarrior Online, you know, the more modern contemporary designs rather than all those older designs. For me, they just look so archaic and cl clunky and whatnot. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, a fan of the old ones, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for me, I think, uh, you, you know, you need to uh, catch up with the times. And part of that is uh, taking the MechWarrior Online kind of designs and uh, making it all the same throughout the different games. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Yeah, I, I, it does, from what it looks like from the outside, it looks like they are trying to get past the ages that shall not be named. <laughs> <laughs> and they shall, uh, they're, trying, they're still trying to make the game very accessible, but I think they're also notice, you know, going much more into just getting fan funded, like the Kickstarters are a huge vindication of um, just getting uh, their products sold directly to the people who want it, rather than trying to do it through game stores or their own uh, yeah. clunky website. <laughs> That old style might not be available like anymore because it costs so much production cost to go and you know print the books and get them all done without actually first up front you know front the money with like Kickstarters. So yeah, um, like I'm noticing a lot of Kickstarters uh, for for game systems are coming out now. Like you know like um, I think it's AGL um, did another Kickstarter for some other game. I I know that Aliens the role playing game did a Kickstarter and all stuff's coming out. So that might be the new procedure. What people like when games do come out, that's where it could be doing first. And then yeah. coming into stores, depending on how much yeah, they I mean, sell. I mean, even even for uh, merchandise, when you have some kind of niche merchandise, Kickstarter is the way to go. Yeah. Like the Expense recently uh, ended their Kickstarter on the Wasinante model, which, holy crap, that's one heck of an expensive model. And why did I buy it? But Wait, which model? <laughs> um, have you seen the Expense on? It's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, oh, of course I've seen the Expense. Are you kidding? Yeah. The, yeah. the Wasinante the main ship the uh, gunboat oh they got a kickstarter for it yeah they did a kickstarter where you could buy a really high quality model mm -hmm. either in plastic or in metal or in silver if wow. you have that much money to spend solid silver casting why not mm -hmm. and yeah kickstarter seems definitely like the way to go oh yeah yeah definitely wow that's i'll have to check that out i mean i'm not gonna buy it but you know i'll still check it out go that's cool <laughs> you know type of thing <laughs> But yeah, you know, Kickstarter is the way to go now uh, for a lot of a lot of different game systems that are coming out. So check them out at Kickstarter. Uh, talk to people and go from there. So um, yeah, that's BattleTech uh, for tabletop. Uh, when does the uh, the stuff ship out? The uh, the first wave. Yep, first wave is going to be March 2020. So actually, really soon. Hopefully, we're going to have those first sets of miniatures in our hands very soon. Yeah. And then the other part is going to be late 2020. Okay. So uh, we also talked uh, last last year was a bunch of fan games that are that that have been out or are are releasing. One is Wolves uh, that just actually released in January, I believe, or late late December. I I, I forgot when it actually like released. Uh, this is December twenty sixth. Okay, December twenty sixth. So uh, Wolves is kind of like a, a Mech Assault uh, clone uh, of the game, and you know, and we had him on the First Circuit podcast as well. Pajama Boy, and uh, then also Mech Warrior, um, Living Legends came out, uh, or, or didn't come out actually. They got no, a bunch. It's of, been out yeah, for it's been out for a long time. Sorry, tenth anniversary. <laughs> tenth anniversary for Mech Warrior, like Legends, and they just came out with the Marauder Mech. So um, you know, definitely go check that out, guys. I'll I'll leave links down below so you can go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, find what's going on from there. And uh, then we had uh, um, anything you guys want to talk about? Wolves or Mech Warrior? You know, Living Legends. No, I'm just okay. gonna say, Mac yeah. Living Legends has always been the prime example of a fan game done yeah. right. Yeah. And if you can check yeah. it out, it's an amazing fun game, and no, it's gonna be free. Yeah. Uh, then also we had a bunch of guests uh, last year. Uh, really, really cool guests: John Everest, who did the music composer for BattleTech; uh, Bombadil, who uh, works for uh, PGI, kind uh, kind of like the marketing, uh, the the PR guy, or freelance marketing i think freelance marketing yeah. 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 yeah 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 we tried to ask him like what he does but um it was like uh it was it was, it was dodgy i guess or something yeah it was kind of dodgy. <laughs> it's funny as well that you know like it was funny seeing the update uh, for you know the developer update for Aquarius 5 and they're like yeah we we had no idea what was going on says no guns no galaxy yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we we knew as much as you guys did it's like oh that that's interesting 
Yeah, they had for uh, um, No Guts on Galaxy. Mitch Gittleman, obviously, uh, everyone knows Mitch Gittleman. Uh, works yep. for Hairbrain Schemes. Uh, massive amounts of different things he did. Really, really funny guy. I like that guy. I'm just going to say, episode 100, best episode of the First Circuit Podcast. Go in and check it out. I'll leave links down below, man. Check it out, guys. Uh, of, of all the different links uh, for these guys. Um, Blaine Pardue, who actually pretty much made the clans. Um, yeah, and the funniest quote was how Kerensky just walked out his back door and said, Hey, look, there's Wolverine. You'll be called Clan Wolverine. <laughs> I love that quote. That was awesome. Uh, incoming missile podcast uh, for another podcast that's out there, um, and then Wolves game. You know, you know, pretty much. And we plan to have more guests uh, throughout the year and also in the coming years. Um, we try to have a lot of people on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So I mean, that leads us on at least. Um, uh, yeah, we've we covered somewhat pretty much uh, what's happened in uh, 2019. A whole bunch of stuff. Plenty of uh, mech games, but 2020. Mm-hmm. What's the future of Mech Games and the First Circuit podcast? Yeah, future of Mech Games for 2020. Obviously, um, I mean, the Battletech uh, tabletop stuff is going to happen. The Battletech video game we've talked a bit about. MechWare Online, they uh, was that they're going to have a meeting in late January to decide what to do with MechWare Online. So hopefully we'll have some news in no, an episode or two. And MechWare 5. Big update in January. Beyond that, we're going to have to see what happens. So 2020 is kind of a wild card, I think, in terms of yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Mac news. We don't really know what's going to happen. So it's going to be an exciting year for us. Hopefully positive excitement. Hopefully not so much negative excitement as we had yeah. last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, 2019 was an amazing year to be a Mac fan. And let's hope that 2020 is going to be an amazing year as well. Or maybe an even better one. Yeah, one game I'm looking forward to is actually Iron Harvest, which uses a kind of like World War One uh, real time strategy mix. So that looks interesting to go and check out. Uh, it's called yeah. Iron Harvest. I'm a Mecha fan, so just anything's good. And uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, we'll have to wait and see, of course, because the thing is, uh, with 2019, at least we had we knew what the plan was we knew macquarie 5 is coming out and with the kickstarter it's you know big whole plan for tabletop but now macquarie 5 is out yeah it's um and macquarie online has reached its peak so to speak with the total number of mech packs and how it would be balanced it's uh uh i don't know i i i'm in my mind i'm putting it as sort of a peak at least where we we've got all the mech stuff we've had a really good time uh but 2020 um, it, the pace is going to slow down a bit, at least mm-hmm. for now. The my, I'm putting my expectations lower because, like with MechWarrior Five, any DLCs, you know, they, they, it's going to take a while to radically change the game. And same with mods and everything. So yeah, it, it's trundled along. And the most interesting thing, oddly enough, at the end is well, the tabletop with yeah. all the stuff that they're coming out with it. They're, they're all all the video games have somewhat come out. They've been released and. Uh, we don't know what the hell's going to go on with MechWarrior 5, but uh, the tabletop people, they're chugging along. They're, they're the ones who are going to take this and run with it. Yeah, true. The uh, the online version and stuff like that, MechWarrior line, I don't expect much, per se. Uh, MechWarrior 5, obviously, they were talking about clans, so um, there will be mods for clans. I know like, once the mod tools come out, they'll be popping out some mods for that, obviously. And then, yeah. and then uh, PGI will make... Uh, DLC for clans, but they want to either make it a huge DLC. As, as he was talking about, though, it would be a big, huge yeah. DLC. So this is something you would expect, even if they started developing now, it would be at the end of 2020. Yeah, kind oh, yeah of definitely. Deal. And definitely. it would be its own, almost like standalone game or huge standalone DLC type deal. So um, depending on how well MechWare 5 sold, I, I imagine the best things to do uh, revenue-wise is you want to make uh, bolt-on DLCs that you sell, you know, ten dollars, twenty dollars a pop, mm, just yeah. like what Hairbrain Schemes Battletech does, and expand the base experience. Um, that that would be my guess going forward. Other yeah. than, <laughs> uh, who knows how their finances are doing <clears throat> nowadays? Because uh, it might be all right. There's this kind, you know, depending on how big the player base is for MechWarrior Five, who knows if they'll it's even worth making DLC. You might have to return to MechWarrior Online. Well, no, Steam, uh, they plan to pop it out on Steam, so they'll have another sale increase on Steam. So Yeah, let's, you know, so let's cross our fingers that that actually happens. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, it, it all depends what happens, yeah. How much you sold? 
which we'll never get the numbers <laughs> for. But yeah, we'll get the proper release in 2020 for MechWarrior 5. Though we're looking forward to that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, since it's so much up in the air for the first circuit, we uh, we'll have to wait and see how things pan out. I think yeah, the tabletop was be something we'll have to get a lot more into. That's mm-hmm. what we know is going to cover MechWarrior 5. Uh, We'll have to wait and see what DLCs they announce, what they announce for MechWare Online. It's all so very much in the air. But So we're most likely what going to do a bi-weekly schedule, I mm-hmm. think it is. It yeah. makes the most sense. We don't have... We, we did weekly schedule with MechWare Online because there was always a patch or a mech coming out or you know, something interesting going on to cover. We were really engrossed in the game. Yeah. But now with uh, mech content sort of slowing down, generally speaking, it makes a lot more sense for us to you know go bi-weekly releases so that we're covering just updates as they come to us yeah um planning on more guests special topics regarding um you know just different things going on and also stuff we could just kind of like think on think like you know what's the best beer you know you know standard beer or davion <laughs> beer or what's better a triple f burger or triple b burger or something like that you know kind of argue that point or something lore wise stuff yeah, I think uh, we've had quite a lot of fun with guests. <laughs> See in his face, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See his face on the on the channel, so funny. <laughs> we, we've had a lot of fun with guests. It really helps, uh, you know, uh, give a new angle uh, mm, that yeah. we can give uh, to certain mech games and what not. So, so we can talk about lore, we can talk about uh, making a soundtrack, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've had quite a lot of fun fun with guests, and I really hope we can get some fun more some more guests in twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah, like uh, we talked a lot about. Um, uh, Catalyst Game Labs and Tabletop. We should almost try and find one of them to get on true, and true. Uh, yeah. talk about the, the franchise. It would make a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> who knows what kind of topics we'll broach out into. Uh, what more? We, we could do whole episodes probably talking about all the issues at Big Warrior 5. Like, let's talk about AI for an episode, yeah. if not three. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh man, yeah. There's a lot of stuff um, to go on for next year, but of course there might be some dry spells as well too, depending on what mm. goes on. So okay, yeah. And if you guys in the audience have anything you want us to talk about, feel absolutely free to leave us comments or contact us on Twitter, presumably, and give us your inputs. I personally, for example, I would be very much interested in getting um, a bit into the modding stuff getting some people from the modic scene on here special guests stuff like that and if you have ideas we're absolutely open to hear them yeah definitely definitely so uh that was episode um 111,000. today's hosts are biter blark and ian bye bye and thank you very much for staying with us for 2019 exactly and myself old bot 10025 thank you so much for supporting the channel supporting the host and everything else i do appreciate it and we will see you on the battlefield